Hey, what up guys? Welcome to Education in Education. My name's Tyler and I have two phenomenal teachers from Cotter School District. And we are gonna be chatting about some literacy stuff and history stuff for some, the middle school mm -hmm. age? Middle yeah. school age students. So, let's go. Now we're gonna wait for 45 minutes and we'll start. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm just being silly. But I guess first thing, could you guys kind of tell them um, who you are and 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 what you what you teach and what you do? Mm -hmm. I'm Jenna Adams. I teach fifth grade literacy. Um, I have about 60 kids, three blocks of edu uh, you know throughout the day, so 90 minutes. So we got a little bit of time to really dig into some cool stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm uh, Bradley Edmondson. I have six graders. Uh, I do history and science, and I have about the same time frame of a 90 minute class period. That's awesome. Which one do you like better, history or science? When I started, definitely the history, mm -hmm. but the more I did, this is only my second year, Yeah. but the more I've kind of done the science, it's gotten so close now. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. So neck and neck. I like yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. It started with history. It was the clear winner, but now it's... So it's anybody's game at this yeah. point. I love yeah. it. I'm all literacy, baby. All literacy. All, all, literacy. Literacy. all <laughs> literacy, baby. I'm playing no games. Uh, how many How many years did you say? How many years you've this been teaching? This is my eighth year. Eighth year. That's awesome. Yep. Okay. Have you guys always been here at this district? Mm -hmm. I taught two years in a much larger district. Um, so this is a big opportunity. Once I shifted here, uh, I just had more freedom. I had less kids. Uh, to really try some new stuff. Yeah, so, focus and, and yeah. reach out there. I love it. Yeah. Jenna, I was going to start with you, if you don't mind. So we're going to talk about some literacy stuff that you do in the classroom. You do some really cool stuff um, with regards to um, students, not only like utilizing literacy, but utilizing other skill sets to show off what they've read or what they've understood. Do you want to kind of talk about Absolutely. I have a huge problem with just the want to read. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was trying to think of different ways to just make them love reading again and it not be a chore because it's a life skill. Yeah. So um, I kind of took away some of that, the computerized testing and I got the freedom to just kind of reevaluate how they're going to make progress with their reading. So they're in charge of making their own goals. They decide what they're gonna read, how long they're gonna read it, um, who they're gonna read it with, if they're gonna tie it to a movie, if they're going to just read different types of media. Um, and if they, realized that it was that they're on track they made good decisions with what they're choosing to read then as an incentive um, it's called checkpoint day um, halfway through each quarter we make uh, book trailers oh, to that's cool. yeah to uh, kind of share with the district and kind of just build that culture for reading within our whole elementary so and they're learning how to make videos yeah. in the process that's something you take to any job anywhere absolutely um, they're most comfortable with with iMovie, they're easy to produce, easy to edit. Um, so it takes about two class periods for them to kind of, they have the option to do it independently or to say, hey, I really love this book. I know you didn't read it, but you're really good at the techie stuff. Mm -hmm. So why don't you be my partner? Oh, that's good. Um, so that even if they don't feel like they are good readers, they do it enough to be able to do the techie stuff. Yeah. So, um, Within that, you know, rubric, you know, all the all the teaching stuff. But once it's on a video day, then I let them go throughout the campus to just have that time with them and their partner to draw viewers into what they read, why they liked it, the themes, all those things that convinced me that they held on to what they read. And it gives them some ownership of, hey, you know what? This book was kind of cool. It wasn't yeah. as lame as I thought it would be. Yeah. So, um, which is that attitude at that middle age. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, after that, then they, they have a few minutes of the last class period to edit it. Um, and then I help them convert it to a QR code. And I post it on my door, which is always open, so that anybody on campus with a device can scan the QR code and have a taste of that book. That's cool. That's awesome. Can I ask you about, you said at the beginning, you said you let them set their own goals for, with regards to reading. Um, I know with a lot of teachers, they, they don't feel comfortable allowing students to have that freedom in it because they're like, oh, the kid's going to say, I want to read one book or, you know, I just want to, you know, do a chapter a month. You know, they, they feel like, I don't know, their mindset is that students under 
are going to undershoot it? Do you just like, do you have parameters for that? Or do you find that students, what do you, what are you seeing whenever you allow them that freedom? Very few parameters actually, but I, I would say I have the most in the first quarter until they get down what they're doing and what they're undertaking. Yeah. Um, but as the year progresses, they realize that, yeah, I may have one book for six weeks, but what am I going to do with that book for six weeks? If, if they are, you know, have a busy extracurricular lifestyle to where reading is a chore, as long as they're dipping into that book, you know, daily and, and giving me those those task cards and that and convincing me that, hey, I've still got it, I'm still holding on to mm -hmm. it, then I, I've i at least held on to that student. They're yeah. not gonna just make reading not a part of their life because not everybody's gonna love reading. Yeah. So um, I give them that freedom because I want them to take that ownership of this, I'm in charge of my learning. And once you give them that, most of the time, more times than not, mm -hmm. the the kids are going to continuously have greater goals as the year continues because they set it, they met it, they got rewarded, not by a party or you know something extrinsically, but they're like I. I got it because I did it. Yeah, I, I set out to do it and I did it. It's like they have more ownership because they they pick those goals, they reach those goals. They I yeah, know, that's and cool. with each quarter, I give them more freedom. You know, hey, you did jump through all the hoops that you set for yourself. This quarter, you want to read with a partner? Give it a shot. You know, it may that's not cool. work out. You may not get it to checkpoint this time. Um, you know, if if you took on too much, but you at least learn that the next quarter you don't need to do that. Yeah. Or you like movies, movies are my thing, I quote movies every other day. Yeah. Then you are gonna read that book. Hey, that's you know, twenty chapters. You've never read a book that big, but you like that movie? Sure. Read that yeah. book, set it out, finish the book, then you can watch the movie in my class at lunch every day until it's done. That's Just awesome. compare the two at the end. No problem here. That's so cool. they're actually doing more work when they set out those types of goals. Yeah. But uh you let them be in charge of it. They don't. They don't realize that. Yeah. So, kind of mind warping them a little bit. Yeah. In my own way. That's it's good. <laughs> Yoda in the background, but that it good. works for it works was, for this age level perfectly. Yeah. That's so cool. So. And it's almost like you're building, like other. I mean, I love. I we talked about earlier. You're building other skill sets with the movies, but also you're giving them, they're reflecting on what they did, like their goals, their like skill sets, what they can handle, if they work well with partners or by themselves. You're giving them like, um, they're getting some like self-reflection. Like mm -hmm. they can see their skill sets. How does this work for me? Because I find that, you know, you guys, are, we're talking middle level, but as students get into high school and especially college where they don't have their parents, it's like a lot of people, we say it all the time, they don't know how to study yeah. because they don't know where they're successful. They don't know if they read better or if they work with a partner mm -hmm. or if they need to be, you know, more focused or, or And most what. importantly, they don't know how to prioritize. Yes. And when you let them help, uh, when you give them that freedom to create the goals, you know, it gives them a purpose that they, they pull out the school calendar. They tell them how much they practice at this sport and do this. So they know, well, I'm really only going to have Wednesdays and Fridays to actually dig into yep. a good book. So I'm not going to have 30 chapters to read this. It's not a, an attainable goal. Yeah. So I'm just so teaching them to differentiate between small goals and big goals and realizing that both have to happen to, to get the end you know, result that you're wanting, yeah. uh, that's a big eye opener for, you know, to be successful as oh, a yeah. student. I agree. And I, I think, you know, people talk about like, I listen to like a lot of like leadership podcasts and they talk about goals at every level. Like and mm -hmm. you're starting it for fifth grade, right? Mm -hmm. You're starting at fifth grader. They're setting short-term goals, long-term goals, and they're, you know, they're creating them, they're assessing them, they're reflecting, and then they're building new goals. I think that's incredible, a great habit to get students into. And it's something they can carry into anything. Yeah. So I love transferable skills and it sounds like all of you, every single one of your kids will be successful because of what you've done. Every single one of them. There's not one kid that's not going to be successful. That's, that's your guarantee, right? It's my that's guarantee. The, that's the Jenna guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. What have you said that to parents when you first started class? Hey guys, here's the Jenna guarantee. I've got a certificate. I'm going to lay it out. I'm going to lay it out. Yet, right here. Every yeah. single one of your kids is going to be a state senator. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> That's, I hope you're prepared. Um, okay, so, so, all right, sorry. I apologize. That's um, okay. So you want to you wanna go ahead and tell them some of the stuff you do that's really cool with regards to your class. Um, I know we talked about some stuff with like trading cards and then some other programs. So let's start with the, the trading card system you set up. Did you create that from scratch? 
Yeah, I mean, no. The idea, the concept of it kind of came from uh, my childhood, like some of the things I liked to enjoy doing yeah. was just playing video games. Yes. One of my favorite video games was the Final Fantasy series. Yeah. And in Final Fantasy VIII, they have a trading card game. Yeah. And so I tried to model it off of that one. But in this one, it's a little different. Yeah. Uh, it's more educational, a lot more educational. That's good. Uh, that's, good. <laughs> yeah. that's good. That's good. Yeah. School and yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah, school and stuff. <laughs> so they play on a four by four grid, and each card has so many numbers on each side. Mm -hmm. Uh, but each card has a picture over the historical figure we're going over uh, and also goes over information, different abilities. Usually the abilities on the cards I try to match with things they actually did. Like when we get to yeah. Mesopotamia, they have like a Mesopotamia card deck they get to choose cards from. That's and cool. Mesopotamia they have Hammurabi. And so one of Hammurabi's abilities is like Hammurabi's code. And it kind of mentions his ability of how his code really impacted other cards and how it impacts other Mesopotamia cards. Uh, it kind of, the whole card things started because last year I found that the biggest issue I had was I had a bunch of kids who knew the material, knew the classwork, but they just weren't turning in the assignments. Yeah. And so I'd have some students who were, you know, A, B students in there, maybe getting like D's or even worse because they just weren't turning in anything. Yeah. Uh, and they were okay getting that D. Then I want them to be better where they're actually wanting to get the, you know, B's or yeah. higher at the A. So this year I kind of started over the summer. I decided to make some of the cards, which was a bit of an undertaking. I'm going to say, it and seems big, time consuming. <laughs> it is. It's not done. Uh, yeah. I think I've only got, like, my, of course, we're just down the grease unit. I'm only, yeah. I'm still having to work on a few of those cards before I print them because I don't want them to be too, uh, you know, too powerful. I want them to yeah. kind of be balanced with the other cards. Uh, but starting off, I had my Paleolithic Mesopotamia card deck, which in, well, included things like a Megatherium, uh, which is a giant sloth. Uh, oh yeah, we all yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. I got a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what would it be without the giant slot? Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's right. <laughs> and we had Otzi the Ice Man. Uh, and we got to Egypt after that, and you know more iconic figures they recognize yeah. like Ra, Set, uh, then the ones that they and King Tut. But yeah, you can know King, King Tut really is only like a, he's like twelve years old. He didn't do much, right? Yeah, yeah he, he really didn't do that much. He died when he was like nineteen. Nineteen, my bad, my uh, bad. Give or take. But really, he doesn't do that much. So we kind of go over him, but he's only like a little bit. And then we kind of learn more about like Ramses II, yeah. uh, Akhenaten, uh, some of the ones who really kind of shaped and changed the culture a little yeah. bit more, some more popular than others. Yeah. Uh, and of course, in the information, I found that some of the kids like, because last year when it was like Akhenaten, uh, nobody could remember what he did. Yeah. It was just kind of the name. But because of the card game, it kind of gives a description over what he did to the Egyptian people and what he, you know, like how kind of unpopular he was for changing their whole religious system. Yeah. And so the kids were able to kind of get that answer more. And super digestible. Better. Small yeah. chunks. Yes. Say. Yes. And it's like we live in a world now where if they want the deep dive, they just pull up their phone. Well, they're young, but mm -hmm. they could pull up their phone and, and get it. But it, you're giving them, like, you're probably teaching all of it, but you're focusing in on those key components they kind of summarize their big impacts on where we are now or that society, that culture. Yes. That's really cool. And especially like on the tests, like a lot of times I'll try to like, for the description information, I'll try to put like test answers actually in their cards. Yeah. And some cards are very rare, like uh, out of the 60, roughly 65 kids I have, there's only like one of one card sometimes. Yeah. But other times there might be just four of that card yeah. or a whole bunch, like 30. And the kids are like, ah. Oh, you know, another unskilled laborer. <laughs> and so, oh, you can stand yeah. in the way of a sword. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but, you know, I have other cards, too, like uh, Happy, uh, which is a Egyptian god. Yeah. It kind of helps, to, like, all the farmer cards, like Mesopotamia farmer, Egyptian farmer. A lot of the kids were like, I keep getting farmers. <laughs> There's not so good. Yeah. But then, you know, that one card, Happy, kind of because of the Nile with the irrigation, kind of bringing farmers to make a lot of agriculture kind of helps their other cards because they get to yeah. play with multiple cards in the game. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I started off doing in the year. And then later on I was kind of finding, okay, you know, I'm getting work turned in more. Yeah. But it's not really good quality work that's getting turned yeah. in sometimes. I think they're just doing the work just to get the card yeah. package. Yeah. And another part of the card package was that they couldn't have detention for that week. As long as they didn't yeah. have a detention. Ooh, that's good. Throw that, that week, classroom management in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Detention that week and they turned in all their work for the week, they got a card package. Uh, but I was getting a lot of assignments and I was thinking back to last year and I was like, you know, I'm getting a lot more work turned in, but I feel like the average is a little bit less than what it was. So I was kind of yeah. like, maybe my game's 
not helping in some ways like it was before. So I added a program called Classcraft. Uh, it's a thing that you can purchase. I think I did, you know, it was like a hundred bucks for a whole year's worth. So I just kind of took that out of my classroom funds. Sponsored by Classcraft. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're not sponsored. No, <laughs> I'm just joking. No, we're not. <laughs> we wish though. Checks wish in the us. mail. <laughs> so I did a lot of the stuff like that. Uh, and they get to, in Classcraft, they get to end up making a character and they get to choose their different class of character. And each character has health, uh, AP for action points that they get to do things, and some classroom abilities use their AP, uh, like they get to sit wherever they want for the day if they use an ability. Uh, one of them is they get to eat in class for that day, if they or their whole team, because they're on teams too. I have them divided up into like five or six in each team. So their whole team gets to eat for that day if they use that ability. Or some of the abilities that are really hard to get that take more levels involve like a cheat sheet for the test that I give them as the game master in the game. Yeah. And so I get to make it. And I found that it's helped a lot with bringing those grades up now yeah. because they get so much experience and more gold based on their assignment grade now rather than just having it turned in. And so I ended up changing the whole card game system to where in the Classcraft game they could accumulate gold for doing things, where now their card packages, instead of it being like a weekly thing where they get the cards, now they have to use so much of their in-game gold to purchase the physical copies of the cards. That's awesome. So you're using that online program to transfer over into the hand-to-hand -hand yes. game. That's and so it's really good for the behavioral stuff. And part of the game also, they get to do these boss battles. Yeah. And the boss battles, I get to edit the bosses. And some of the times I'll just put in, like we usually do a study game every day or two before the test. And on these study games, I'll end up asking questions over, uh, like one I did, velocity, how they had to convert uh, oh, feet per hour into the SI units for meters per second velocity. Uh, so they had to end up converting things for their boss battle. If they got it right, they did damage to the boss. And if they got it wrong, then their character got damaged, and they had to work as a team to try to survive. And then if they beat the boss, they get a bunch of experience points and a bunch of gold, which helps them buy more cards, more cards. helps them. Building that class culture. Yes. Yep. Building that achievement culture. Like you're achieving, but you're also learning something in it. Yes. So it sounds like it's like a mix between like, like you take like classroom dojo, you've got uh, like Khan Academy and then like World of Warcraft or something yeah. like that. Yeah, like you're combining those three and you're, you're putting it towards something that also attains the card game that you, you'd mm -hmm. already built to get those in there. That's cool. Yes, and uh, one of the features that I'm kind of getting into now, because I had it when I did special education, mm -hmm. which was probably two years ago, three years ago when I did that, but there wasn't as much to it. Yeah. But since I just got it this year, I found that they have a whole new quest line. And so I'm able to kind of go in and people can share their quests. So yeah. I ended up searching, you know, for like Greece, what they had for Greece quests. And I didn't really find too much, to be quite honest, that yeah. I really wanted that was applicable to my class. So now I've kind of started making quest lines for them, yeah. and it kind of has a story component to it, and there's different links that they can end up clicking, and I have Google Forms set up. Oh, that's uh, cool. And once they do get such a score on a Google Form, they just have to screenshot it, and they paste it into the class craft then, and they submit it to me. And from that point on, they can go on to the next quest, and it's kind of self-driven, like they can take those Google Forms uh, quizzes as much as they want. Yeah. They get to use the websites I give them for their information or our slides that we kind of go over. And then, you know, they have to get like a seven out of 10 before they can move on to the next part of the yeah. test, part of the quest. And then at the very end of the quest, I have a Google form where it's a one chance form this time. Yeah. Uh, and they have to use kind of all the information we've talked about before. And if they get it, they get it. If they don't, you know, they miss out on the bigger reward at the end of the yeah. quest. That's cool. So it sounds like with both of the things that you guys are doing in your classes, you're um, in your own ways, you're able to differentiate your your classes based on different student skill sets. Like what you're doing with literacy, you're allowing students to, um, you know, push themselves further based on what they think their goals are and how they're succeeding. And, uh, and then they're able to like reach further. Some are learning how to edit, some are partnering with people to edit. And then with yours, they, with the class craft, they're able to go forward and push forward if they need to not being held back by, I guess, their classmates, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like yes. a lot of what you guys are doing, it tailors to students that are trying to catch up and mm -hmm. students that are trying to push ahead and then that, that median of students that are kind of on on level, yeah. I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Absolutely. That's cool. That's a huge thing that that I, it's very important to me um, because, you know, I've, I've worked in a school where 
like one of our big goals was to get students caught up, but also not like limit, put limitations on students that can just run. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know with a traditional classroom that can be hard because I mean, it's just not doable with 20 to 30 mm -hmm. kids. You can't say, okay, guys, well, you know, all right, I'm going to teach 20 different lessons based on your pace. But with what you guys have incorporated, these students can, can go and stop and move kind of at their, at their pace, at yeah. their individualized pace. I love and that. It's, I mean, it's a little bit, it's more work on our end initially, yeah. um, especially with keeping track of, you know, 65 goals all yeah. at once, but yeah. that's, you know, where technology comes into play and, you know, just, and making the point to use that as valid instruction time. It's not the busy work, the yeah. checking in that is showing to the students, Hey, I'm accountable. So you're accountable. Yeah. I am checking in with you weekly so I can help you keep on track with what you said you were going to do. You know, there's some kids that may read 12 books in a quarter, whereas some kids may read two, yeah. but the growth that they both made was substantial, you know, for them, for them. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you guys so much. That's really cool. And I uh, really appreciate it. We asked earlier, they don't have Instagram and Twitter, so can't mm. check them out. Sorry, that's on you, bro. Um, create an Instagram or Twitter for them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then tag right, them no, in no, it. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. That's identity theft, okay? <laughs> you will be arrested. Um, thank you guys again so much. I really appreciate you guys taking the time um, to do this. And uh, I wish you nothing but the best. Anything you want to say to anybody out there who's interested in what you're doing, where they can find resources online or um, anything? Oh man, I'm terrible at this part. I'm a, no, okay. I, I know. I'm an, no, it's okay. I'm an invent the wheel kind of girl. I'm just like, hey, I got an idea. I'm just going to go ahead and create that. And I, I that's probably I not it. the route to go. No, you give them <laughs> enough instructions to where they know what they can do and they can set up their own rubrics, yeah, you know, and then the it. students fill in the blank. And then yours, I'm assuming, with the cards, they can pay you and a small fee monthly and you'll send them the cards. That's the way to do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's good. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what was the website again? Classcraft? Classcraft.com. Uh, dot org. Dot, dot, dot org. Dot TV. Dot org. Com. Um, Maybe. Dot org Maybe slash dot org. <laughs> okay. You can Google it. Yeah. Like, you don't have to it's, know the exact yeah, site anymore. Right. Classcraft. And if it looks weird, it's not it. Okay. Um, so <laughs> thank you. It. it could be it, it depending on what yes. you think is weird. All right. Well, thank you guys again so much. Y'all are awesome. And I appreciate you guys for listening. Um, if you could uh, just, you know, I don't know, do whatever people do at the end of videos, like, subscribe, rate, I don't know, wherever you listen to this. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Bye. I need to work on my outro. <laughs> <laughs>